Hello everybody, welcome back to our plumbing course. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson covers a plumbing material, very common one, it's called PVC. So let's get right into it. Welcome to our channel. By now we've loaded almost 100 videos onto YouTube so that anyone can have access to structured trades training resources. We are really trying to grow this channel and the best way for that to happen is for you, the viewer, to subscribe. Also, if you learned something from these videos, don't forget to click like. So thanks for your support. Let's get back into the lesson. PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride. It's a special kind of plastic we can use to make pipes. It's an inexpensive kind of pipe that we can use for supply or drain lines. I'm gonna focus on the supply lines today. So let's talk about our pipe first. We have two different types of PVC pipe we can use. One is called Schedule 40. That might be the most common one for residential you'll see. And there's Schedule 80. The difference between the two is not only the way they look. Schedule 40 is generally a white PVC plastic. Schedule 80 is going to be a gray PVC plastic. The difference between the two is really in the performance. You will find Schedule 80 in industrial and heavy duty applications. It's better for higher pressure, and it also has some other qualities. Uh, it has some UV resistance, things like that. So Schedule 40 is a more common residential version. This white pipe is, uh, has a lower pressure rating, but it works fine for our drains and our supplies in a typical residential plumbing system. We've got three common sizes you'll see when we're running supply lines with PVC. I've got my half inch pipe, I've got a three quarter pipe, and I've got a one inch pipe. PVC pipe is a little different than our other plumbing materials. It is measured by the inside dimension of the pipe. So if this is a half inch pipe, we're talking about the inside opening or diameter of that pipe. If you compare it to another plumbing material, say copper half inch tubing, this pipe is measured by the outside diameter of the pipe. So what you end up with is materials that are much bigger than other plumbing materials. Now that we've gone over the pipe, we need to route this pipe for our plumbing system. It needs to make twists and turns. We need fittings to do that. Our PVC fittings have what are called slip sockets in them. And a slip socket means that the pipe slides inside of the fitting. This is not a watertight seal yet but it is a tight fit that will be glued later. So we'll call that a slip socket. So we'll start with one of our simplest fittings, and that would be our end cap. We call it a cap because it goes over the pipe, and this fitting slides on the end of the pipe. It has a slip socket connection. We'll glue that on, and that will seal off that pipe. If you need to connect two pipes in a straight line, you would use a coupler. This coupler is three quarter on both ends, so it will accept a three quarter pipe on this side and one on this side, and now we have connected them in a straight line. Don't forget, all of these slip socket connections will require a glue to make this permanent. You might need to turn a corner with a pipe. You can use a 90 degree elbow to do that, and a, a slip fit on either one of these, and now we have a 90 degree turn. So if we take a, a close look at this fitting, this slip socket is made to accept this pipe. The pipe will slide into this socket and it should bottom out right about on this line right here. When it does that, that's the guarantee that it's a sturdy watertight seal. You might not need to make a 90 degree turn. You can make less of a turn using a 45 degree elbow. This guy is a 45 degree angle and when my pipe goes in here, now I have a 45 degree turn. Sometimes when we're plumbing, we need to add another line off of one that's already existing. You would use a T to do that. And a T would have one pipe coming in this direction and it would come out this other direction and we could run another line or branch off of it in this, in this direction. The other way this could work is maybe our line comes in this way and now we can run off two different directions from one line. Sometimes you might have a situation where you need to change a pipe size. You might have three quarter running in here and then that three quarter would continue out this way. 
Now we need to run a branch off of this side that would be half inch. We can do that with what's called a bushing. This is basically a spacer and it will take our three quarter and step it down to half inch. So it's still that slip socket fitting and then we can add our half inch pipe here and we've made a reduction in size within this one fitting. So if you see what's going on here, now we have two joints to glue in this one place. We're always trying to minimize our joints when we're plumbing. Joints are where we have the most likely chance to have leaks. So we can do this within a single fitting that's made for all this to happen. Let's look at that guy. So I can take this fitting right here and it has three quarters on both ends and it has a built-in half inch branch fitting on that side. I can slip my three quarter in on this side, another three quarter here, and then I can add my half inch pipe here. And we've done the same thing with one less connection or joint to make. A lot of times with our plumbing, we need to change our connection type. So we have specific fittings we call adapters to go from whatever material we're working with to something else. That would be something like this adapter. And this guy here, let's go with this guy. This guy here goes from a three quarter slip socket to male threads on this side. These are three quarter male threads. So our pipe would come in on this side and now we can screw this into a number of different fittings, uh, other transitions, or even valves. I've got a variation of our transition from slip fit to threaded. That was a male version. This is a female version. This one has our slip socket on this side. That's a three quarter slip socket and it has female threads here. So we can attach this to our pipe. Now we would need male threads to screw in here. You might need to control the flow of water within the pipes that you're installing. You would do that with a valve. Here is a ball valve that has these slip fit connections. And this valve will, this is a half inch valve, so it will accept a half inch pipe on this side. And then we'll put another half inch pipe on this side. Now our water flows through here and we have a handle that we can turn. This is the off position for this valve. It's always perpendicular to the, to the line or the pipe that it's installed in. This would be the on position that's always in line with the pipe. Let's take a close look at this valve and see if we can see how this works. So we have a ball inside that's connected to this handle. When the handle's turned uh, in line with the pipe, there is a hole in the ball and it allows water to flow. If we turn this valve closed, it's going to move that hole in that ball in this direction and now we have blocked the pipe so no water can pass through. Once again, we have on and we have off. We can install a valve that doesn't have slip sockets on it in a PVC system. Here I have a three quarter valve and it has threads on both sides. These are female threads, three quarter female threads on both sides. If you remember our transition fittings, we can take our three quarter uh, slip socket on this side and three quarter threads and we can screw it into this valve like this and we can screw another transition fitting or adapter on this side. Now we get a PVC three quarter inch pipe with a gate valve in between. Now we can operate this valve and the way a gate valve operates is with several turns either uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, we can open it or close it. Let's take a close look at this gate valve and see how it works. Right now I have it closed. I've turned the handle clockwise until it's tight. That drops a door or a gate inside of this valve. As I loosen this knob with several turns, that gate will open or lift up and it's allowing for a, an opening through this valve that allows for the water to flow. There's a couple of installation materials we need to go over that will help us install PVC pipe, and that is our glue and our primer. And I talked about the uh, fittings and how the pipe slips in them. We need glue, and we need to prep and glue these joints before they're watertight. 
This is a two-step process. We're going to start with a purple primer. This stuff is nasty. It stinks. I can smell it from here and the lid is closed tight. It is dyed purple so that, that when, it's, uh, when you have an inspection of your plumbing system, it's very obvious that it's been used. We start with this and not only cleans the end of the pipe and the inside of the fittings, it will also soften the material so then we can then add our cement later. This cement stinks almost as bad as our primer. And once you put this stuff on, you push those fittings together, it is a permanent connection and it happens immediately. So this is a very quick process, very easy, but you got to get it right. And if you don't, you got to cut it all out and start over again. With both of these chemicals, they are loaded with warnings on the front of them. They're bad for your eyes, they're bad for your skin, they're bad for your lungs. So treat them with uh, care and use the proper PPE when you're doing this process. So that's just scratching the surface of our PVC. We've gone over our pipes, our fittings, some valves, some installation materials. The next lesson is where we get to have some fun and put all this together and make it work. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Need a little less. You can use... Oh.